Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Gumbinin, fought between Germany and Russia, located outside the town of Gumbinin in general East Prussia on August 20th, 1914. After the Battle of Staluponin, the commander of the German 8th Army, Maximilian von Pritzwitz, had changed his tactics and became convinced that maybe he should be more aggressive. This was caused by the success of General Francois. With Francois' success, Pritzwitz decided to launch a full offensive against the Russian 1st Army before the Russian 2nd Army could reach them. The problem with this is the German 8th Army was still outnumbered by the Russians, 150,000 Germans to 200,000 Russians. The Germans would be given up the advantage of defensive tactics and went directly against the German chief of staff Helmuth von Moltke, who had originally made the entire war plan. Moltke had planned to wage just a defensive war in the east until the Germans had successfully beaten the French back on the west. Even so, Pritzwitz was ready to order the advance, he just needed one little sign. That sign happened on August 19th when a Russian cavalry scout unit came into contact with German forces at Gumbinin. In a surprising move, the Russians did not leave to report back. They dismounted and brought up artillery to push the Germans back. The cavalry suffered heavy casualties, however, and were forced back by the overwhelming German forces in the area. This was the sign, and Pritzwitz launched the attack. With Pritzwitz's approval, General Francois moved forward that night with the 1st Corps and the German 1st Cavalry Division. By 4 a.m. on August 20th, the 1st Corps found the Russian 28th Division and began their attack. The Russians fought bravely, but as would be seen throughout the war, they were not supplied well enough and soon were out of artillery ammunition, leaving them vulnerable to the well-stocked German artillery. The Russians were pushed back about 5 miles, but were able to hold the line when they were joined by the Russian 29th Division turning the battle into a slugfest with neither side moving. South of the fighting, General Mackens' 17th Corps and General von Bülow's 1st Reserve Corps were in transit and unprepared for combat. Even being in this condition, General von Mackensen decided to attack the Russian General Rennenkamp's 3rd Corps at 8 a.m., leaving General von Bülow behind until noon. The Russians themselves were prepared. Francois' attack on the 28th and 29th Russian divisions had alerted Rennenkamp's forces, and they allowed the Germans to advance on their own. Once the Russians were ready, they launched artillery fire at the advancing Germans and were able to not only stop the Germans, but cause the right and left flanks of the Germans to break and retreat. This allowed Russia to secure 6,000 German prisoners and to stop the German attack. This minor setback, however, spooked General Pritzwitz, and he ordered a general retreat of all German forces in the area back to Vistula. He abandoned East Prussia completely to the Russians, and in the end, even though the Russians suffered greater losses, they had still won the battle. Casualties were fairly high on both sides. The Germans had a total of 14,607 casualties, consisting of 1,250 killed, 6,414 wounded, and 6,943 prisoners in total. Meanwhile, Russian records don't give us clean a breakdown, but we do know they suffered approximately 18,839 killed, wounded, and missing. Join us next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.